Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch and Carry. In today's video, we're going to be doing a filter modification to this Casio calculator watch. Uh, this is the CA, let's see if I can get in focus there, 53W. Obviously in the black case, black strap version with the positive display. Uh, this also comes in a few other color variations for the case and strap where you have, I think, green, white, and blue. Uh, those other colors, um, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, come with negative displays, um, which have the black background and the uh, white numerals. A little bit hard to read, so this one tends to be, you know, usually my favorite. And uh, this is my buddy's watch, and he is just starting to get into uh, modifying uh, these, you know, cheaper Casios, and he wanted to just add a little bit of color to this to uh, make it, you know, a little bit different, add some fun to the piece. Um, specifically, he took a look on Google and he saw that somebody had put an orange filter. So uh, here I have a Lee filter chrome orange. So that's what we're gonna be adding to this one today. So pretty easy to do. We're gonna flip the watch over first of all. Let's get zoomed in here. A quick wrist check by the way, wearing the Seiko SRPC 13 automatic. It's a discontinued piece by uh, Seiko. And I put it on this uh, Skagen unmarked mesh bracelet. So really fun, nice color, especially with that orange seconds hand. All right. So for the Casio, as with most of them, you have these four screws here in the back. Just take a small screwdriver here, open these up. And what that will do is uh, give us the module, which is on the inside of the watch. And then uh, we have a couple of ways that we can go about uh, putting this filter in. So I'm gonna do it one way here, but I'll kind of explain uh, the other ways that you can, you can do this. Um, probably no adhesive needed for this project. Um, I, I've worked on the green one of these before, so I'm assuming it's gonna be the same. Um, so that makes it a little bit more convenient. So we're gonna lift up on the case back. There's your speaker, that circle there. And then the inside of this is the module. You'll also have uh, the O-ring around here. So it didn't pop out. So I'm gonna leave that in place. This is a brand new watch that he gave me. So um, if you just take a look here at this O-ring and it has a nice glisten in uh, the light as this one does, that kind of tells you it's already been lubricated. So I'm not even gonna mess with that, but you just wanna double check that before you reassemble. If that is dry, like if this is a used watch, you can take some 100% silicone oil, take that O-ring out and then put it back in. All right, so to get to this module, we're going to look here at the six o'clock and the 12 o'clock positions. So this is the six, this is the 12. If you kind of look right here at the tip of my tweezers, let's get something that's lighter colored here. There you go. So right there. It's actually a small clip. It may not show up on camera, but right there is where you're gonna find a clip and you're gonna find another one right here. And so either one of those you can work with. You're gonna put a tiny bit of pressure uh, inward towards the center of the module. And just enough to kind of lift up on it. So if it's not catching like that one, get a thinner tool. There we go, and just kind of lift up like so. And then you'll get a uh, nice area where you can grab onto the rest of it. So we're gonna lift this guy up. Here's the inside of the case. I'm gonna cover that up for now so we can talk about one of the ways to put this filter on. So with this uh, particular um, construction, you have the display here. And then right around the display, you have this like black border. And the good thing here is the black border is actually a little bit higher than the display. There's a little bit of a lip. So the good thing about that is you, one way that you can do this is take your filter and just, you know, 
find out the measurements. You can probably just outline that in Sharpie, cut it to that size and just leave the filter in there without adhesive. And then that natural lip plus the pressure when you reassemble the module and the case is going to keep that filter nice and pressed in there. So that's one way to do it. Um, you know, as I mentioned, probably no need for an adhesive because you don't want to put um, uh, glue or double sided tape directly onto the display. Now for me though, I prefer to um, put the filter actually on the inside of the watch just because sometimes when you turn these watches like this, forward, backward, left, and right, you can sometimes see just underneath this housing on the inside. And if the filter doesn't extend past that, you're gonna have a little bit of this gray naked screen exposed. And it's you know kind of nitpicky, but I, I don't wanna see that. I want this fully covered. So this cutout for the display is actually smaller than this larger piece here. So let's take a look inside the uh, case. And you can see here, let's get this focused. Okay, we have our normal window cut out for the display, but around here, it's much larger, this whole black border. And then right at the bottom here, there's actually a lip that separates the top portion from the bottom portion. So I like to put uh, cut out a filter that's this exact size that overlaps that cut out in the window. So we don't have any exposed um, screen and just cover the whole thing. And because we have that bottom lip and we're cutting this to shape, there's no need to put an adhesive because there's nowhere for that filter to move. It can't go down any further because of that lip and it can't go anywhere left, right, or up because it's gonna be um, pushing against the case. If you really want to, you can go ahead and add like a thin piece of double-sided tape uh, over there. But uh, I like to keep it simple because uh, if he decides to switch to like a yellow or a green or a different colored filter, it's much easier to remove um, without the adhesive. Okay. So uh, we are going to set that down. Take our filter. Now, because that uh, interior part doesn't come out and this filter is a little bit large, you have to do... It's kind of hard to get the exact cut out right here. So I'm just going to lay my filter over it like so. Okay, so my filter's a little bit hovering above that internal window. I'm just gonna make a couple of marks here with a Sharpie, and we probably will need to do several cuts to really trim this down properly, so. Put a mark there. Mark here. And one over there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, then we're going to lift this up and cover this back up so we can limit dust going inside the case. Take a pair of scissors. It's my uh, Buck Extract multi-tool here. Really nice pair of scissors. Oops, that was off camera, sorry about that. Let's get this back in camera. So I just did one quick cut. We'll put the rest of this um, to the side, save it for another project. Okay, we'll go ahead and trim this other part where the Sharpie marks are. Okay. And then I'm going to bevel the top a little bit just because the inside of that case is a little bit beveled, but the bottom is a perfect 90 degrees. So we'll keep those edges as they are. Okay. And let's take the uh, watch back. It looks pretty good. I'm not going to dust this because I'm just taking a rough measurement. We'll lay the filter down in there and see how that does. So left to right, we look good. We're fitting in there perfectly. It's a little bit shorter than the width of this, but uh, again, because I'm overlapping that cutout window, if I move it all the way to the right, 
there's nothing exposed on the left. And if I move this filter all the way to the left, nothing exposed on the right. So that's a good way to check that you've cut the filter large enough um, for this particular project. Now, uh, this is not sitting flush. That little lip I mentioned at the bottom is um, uh, higher than uh, the filter. So I need to cut out a little strip from the bottom here. So we'll take this filter. Okay, if you can't get it out, just go ahead and tap it down like so. Lift this up and let's take another quick trim here. If you don't want to put the case back on, you can also just turn the watch upside down to limit dust from going in there. Let's cut just a small amount here from the bottom. Okay. Flip this back over. Let's try this again. Okay, and let's see, did I cut enough? Oh, just a tiny bit more. Okay, so we'll do this one more time. There we go. Insert that back in and perfect. So that looks great. Nice fit inside of the, um, the uh, case back or the case. So now that that's in there, we'll go ahead and uh, take a microfiber cloth clean out any possible fingerprints that we might have on here. Or actually, before you do that, I'll lift it up. And if you have an air blaster, go ahead and blast it first away from your case, watch case. And then I'll go ahead and wipe off the display. The reason I do the dusting first is if there's any uh, particles, uh, that are on the the uh, filter, which there there's always going to be some. This is not a um, um, controlled environment, but you want to limit how much dust is on the display before you start rubbing it, because uh, if not, you could grind that particle into the filter, and these are pretty fragile, and that will cause you know a, a scratch to show up. Okay, so that looks good. We'll turn it in the light. Make sure we don't have any fingerprints on there. So it looks good. Let's go ahead and take our air blaster again. Okay. Take our watch. What we do with the watch is um, hold this upside down. Take the air blaster. Okay. And then we'll flip this over. Take our filter. Okay, set that down in place. Nope. Little speck of dust here on the filter. Let me give this another blast of air. Okay, it looks good. Okay, make sure it's sitting flush in there. So that looks good. Take our, um, actually go on the inside here. You have these uh, internal parts. So you have the pushers here on the left and you have where they interact with the module on the inside. So you can see they kind of go inside the watch. So just take a tool and push them out like so all the way out. Then you can go ahead and take your module Give that a quick blast of air. Okay, make sure you're in the right orientation. And uh, I like to put this either from 12 to 6 or 6 to 12. Because that's where the clips are. And then listen for a click. OK, 
okay? And at the bottom. Now, if the module uh, is not sitting flush and you're having a hard time pushing it in, don't force it. It probably just means that uh, one of the uh, pushers has not been pushed out all the way. So just go ahead and uh, take it out and then reset those pushers. So this is in all the way. That looks great. Take a look at our O-ring again. Make sure that the O-ring hasn't come off its track. There's a little bit of a trough that it sits on. So that looks pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what the watch looks like with the filter. So very cool. I like this color choice that he chose. This is the uh, chrome orange, if I hadn't mentioned that already. Kind of changes shade a little bit in the light. So in direct light, it becomes more of a lighter orange. As you turn to the side, it becomes a darker orange. It's a really cool looking. Uh, so what I'm looking for now is any dust that might be in there. So really helps if you have some lighting above. And I like to turn it up check that um, top area, make sure I don't have any uh, dust particles or uh, bare uh, gray display. Uh, turn to the bottom, check the same thing, right and left. Okay, if you can see some gray display, that means your filter is cut too short. And uh, if it bothers you enough, you might wanna do it again so you can uh, cut it larger. So that looks good. Um, let's check, take a look at the functions, just make sure those are still working. So that's the button here on the right. So that looks good. No sound because the speaker is on the case back. Great. And then here, let's push this button here. That's to adjust and that one's working too. So nothing to do over there. We're, we're all set. Okay. So let's go ahead and now fully assemble this. Okay. So 12 o'clock is on your left. So this is the orientation of the case back. Put that on like so. Okay. And then um, take a look here between the uh, case back and the case. Make sure that the O-ring isn't being uh, squeezed out of there, that it's um, not popping out. Okay, so this one looks good. We can go ahead and put a little bit of pressure with one finger and then take our screws here and put those in. And while I'm putting these in, by the way, if you have one of those other colors of this watch, like the green, the blue, or the white, and you were curious if you can take the module from this one, which has the positive display, and put it into those. Yes, you can. The internals, the straps, are all interchangeable between all of these color variations of these current watches because these are reissues. So as long as they're the same reissue year, you can take the modules and the straps out and interchange them. Some people like to take those negative display screens from like, let's say the green version of this and put it into the black one because they kind of like the black on black theme. So very, very easy to do, not a problem. Okay, we'll go ahead and loosely tighten down these screws again. Sometimes they can pop off on you, so just take your tweezers and put it back. Okay, now we're going to lift up here again, check the uh, case back in case, that seam, make sure we don't have any O-ring exposed, so that looks good. We're going to fully tighten, not too tight because the uh, threads for these screws are resin, they're not metal. So it's very easy to strip these, um, the holes for these screws. Great, so that looks good. And there's our final product. So very quick, very easy to do. Okay, give you guys a wrist shot here. It's actually a very comfortable watch um, and very affordable. I think I, he picked this up for like, five bucks i think it's usually a 19 dollars watch from walmart but he got it for five bucks on clearance uh, from one of their clearance bins so uh there's the strap it's a 20 millimeter lug width by the way and there's our filter
Very cool. So uh, the orange is does a really good job, actually, I think, of picking up um, the arithmetic signs here because they're kind of orange. They're more red, but kind of picks them up. Contrasts pretty well with the yellow for the WR. And, of course, the black and orange is just, you know, a... Uh, a solid color uh, color combo that a lot of people use in their watches. So really, really nice. So very easy to do, very affordable. Um, you know, when you start getting these uh, cheaper Casios and you want to play around, I really suggest you do not buy a giant sheet of a color. So like, let's say you wanted to do this mod. You could order this sheet of chrome orange in even the smallest version, I think is quite big. It's about the, the, the width of this... Uh, uh, work mat and uh, you know for one sheet they're about nine bucks 15 bucks but if you're not sure if you like that color you're kind of stuck with it so I really suggest you get one of these this is called a leaf filters swatch book this is meant to be a sample pack which will have this color that I have on this watch but almost I think every color filter that Lee offers um, they're large enough that you can use them for small mod projects like this Casio watch. And if you really like it enough, they actually give you the code, the number code, and the, num and the um, color name. So that way, if you want a bigger sheet or you want to make more of these, then you can order the larger sheet from Leaf Filters. But always start with the swatch book. It's also fun because when you're choosing colors for your watches, you, maybe you put one in there and you don't like it. It's so easy to just go through this and choose another one. And oftentimes what you can do is when the watch is disassembled, I just take the module. Uh, so for example, I have um, this uh, beat up um, world time here that I'm trying to figure out what to do with. So I'll you know, take the module and I'll actually just put it like underneath the filter like so and say, huh, that kind of looks good. You know, sometimes I'll even take the, um, the masking that comes with that watch and just put the whole thing underneath like so and uh, try to do some color combinations. So it just makes it easier to, to plan your modding project when you have the swatch book. So highly recommend this. Kind of hard to find, not really available on eBay. Um, so are not really available on Amazon, so you'll have to try eBay. They're about five dollars on a good day to sometimes twenty bucks. Um, if you can't find the Leaf Filter brand, another one you can choose is called, I believe, Rosco. I'll try to find the link for it on Amazon and put it in the description. But really, any um, camera uh, clear gel filter. If you type those in, camera clear gel filter. Um, you can really just use any brand because they're pretty much going to be the same. But I've always used Lee's and I've liked them. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today's project. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down below. Oh, I bet you a lot of people are going to ask, why don't you try the backlight? That's the other problem with these watches. The reissues do not have a backlight. The black, the green, the other colors, they do not have one. That's a really big bummer. So nothing to show you there. But yeah, as I mentioned, any comments or questions, please put them down below. Uh, again, the parts, I will try to put as many of them in the description. If you could subscribe to this channel as well as my Instagram, that would be greatly appreciated. And as always, have fun, and I'll see you guys on the next one.